ओम नमो भगवते भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञानाजनाजना चक्षुर्मल तस्म श्री गुरव नम नम ओं कृष्णा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष आदि पाश्चात्यादेशानी जय श्री कृष्ण नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत कथाधार श्री वासदी गौरवक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे New reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter two, text sixty-two. Dya yato vishayan pumsaha. Dya yato vishayan pumsaha. Sangas te shu pajayate. Sangas te shu pajayate. संगत संजयते काम संगत संजयते काम काम क्रोधो विजयते काम क्रोधो विजयते Okay, I can read. Mm-hmm. Translation: While contempl while contemplating the objects of the senses, a person develops attachment for them, and from such attachment, lust develops, and from lust, anger arises. Purport: One who is free, a uh, one who is not Krishna conscious. Con- is subjected to material desires while contemplating the objects of this the senses require real engagements and if they are not engaged in the transcendental loving service of the lord they will certainly seek engagement in the service of materialism in the material world every in <coughs> In the in the material world, everyone, including Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma, to say nothing of other demigods and the heavenly planets, is subjected to the influence of sense objects. And the only method to get out of this puzzle of material existence is to become Krishna conscious. Lord Shiva was deep in meditation, but when Parvati agitated him for sense pleasure, he agreed to the proposal. And as a result, Kartikeya was born. When Haridas Thakur was was young devotee of the Lord, he was similarly allured by the incarnation of Maya Devi. But Haridas easily passed the test because of his unalloyed devotion to Lord Krishna, as illustrated in the above mentioned verse of Shona Charya. Since a devotee of the Lord of the Lord shuns all material sense enjoyment due to his higher taste. For spiritual enjoyment in the association of the Lord, that is the secret of success. One who is not, therefore, in Krishna consciousness, however powerful he may be in controlling the senses by artificial repression, is surely ultimate is sure ultimately to fail. For the slightest thought of sense pleasure will agitate him to gratify his desires. So. In this text, how does how does we how do we get attached to something or someone? Well, anyway, how do we get attached? When we engage ourselves in uh, material objects. Yeah, I mean, we keep thinking about them, contemplating. Yeah. Then we contemplating objects. Then we get attachment, and then what happens from this attachment? 
anger anxiety first lust, lust. Yeah. yeah first lust the desire to attain this uh, objects the desire to enjoy these objects develops so first we are just thinking about something whatever how we want to enjoy then we get attached to that enjoyment then we get a desire to enjoy you know like too much desire and then when the desire is not fulfilled then we get angry that's how anger arises the mm. so Prabhupada is helping us point out in the purple that the senses they they need they need enjoy they need some engagement they can't be just left loose the mind has to think of something the eyes have to see something you know the ears have to hear something now it's our choice if we engage them in material things then we are hearing what happens we are going to get attachment for them then get lust then greed and uh, lust and then anger but Prabhupada is pointing out, he's giving us, he's showing us the right way. He's saying if the senses are engaged in Krishna's service, then we don't need to go through all this. In fact, we can come to the transcendental platform. We can become Krishna conscious. We can think of Krishna, engage our senses in Krishna. Then instead of lust, the heart in fact gets clean more and more. And the pure love that is there in our heart it's revealed more and more. So the example that Lord Ch uh, Shla Prabhupada, what example is he giving us? About Haridas Thakur? Yes. That? Yeah, that um, he was also allured by the by Maya Devi, but he refused and he really passed the test because he was a great devotee. Yeah. yeah. She came to attract him personally. Imagine Maya Devi, how attracted she attractive she is. We are all in her under her charms, you know. And if she she came full blown, full personified to Haridas Thakur. He was not affected. In fact, he gave her the association and she asked, please kindly give me the Hare Krishna mantra. She got, she wanted to take initiation from him. This is how the pure devotional service acts. Whereas Prabhupada is pointing out that Lord Shiva, he was meditating, but yet his meditation was broken and Kartikya was born. But Haridas Thakur, he was completely engrossed in uh, hearing and chanting the Lord's names and glories. And in fact, he was able to um, influence Maya Devi by his association, inspire her by his association. So here, Prabhupada is again pointing out that a devotee, a sincere devotee, shuns all material sense and enjoyment due to his higher taste for spiritual enjoyment in the association of the Lord. You know, like when we get the real thing, then it's easy for us to let go of the artificial things or the lower taste. When we get a higher taste, you know, any food also, which is more rich, prepared, more nicer ingredients, then we, we want to eat that. We don't want to eat something which is, you know, it's not very rich in taste, not very nicely prepared. Similarly, spiritual enjoyment in the association of the Lord. It's a higher taste. At, at our stage, we may not be able to appreciate it just as a patient does not appreciate uh, drinking sugarcane juice, one who's suffering from jaundice. Rupa Goswami gives this example. But the more he drinks sugarcane juice, the more he gets cured, the more he relishes the sweetness of it. So in our condition where we are thinking we are the body, we may not appreciate a Krishna consciousness so much. But if we can just simply continue, continue in the practice of Krishna consciousness, gradually, gradually, we will be able to also experience this enjoyment. Okay. 
and, and how, uh, Prabhupada is saying, however powerful we are, if we artificial try sense control, we will fall down. Artificial sense control is not permanent solution. Like Vishwamitra, he, he meditated for 60,000 years, but yet then Menka was born, you know. But again, Haridas Thakur, he was chanting and even the when the prostitute came to him, he was he, there was no struggle for him. In fact, the, the prostitute became his devotee. So this is what Prabhupada is helping us uh, understand that our senses can get real enjoyment in the association of Krishna by engaging in service. Krodhat Bhavati Samoha. Krodhat Bhavati Samoha. Samoha Smriti Vibramaha. Samoha Smriti Vibrama. Smriti Brahmshad Bhutti Nasho. Smriti Brahmasad Bhutti Nasho. Buddhi nashat pranashyati. Buddhi nashat pranashyati. Translation. From anger, complete delusion arises. And from delusion, bewilderment of memory. When memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost. And when intelligence is lost, one falls down again into the material pool. Purpose. Sri Rupa Goswami given us this direction. Prapanna Chittakaya Buddhya Hari Sammandi Vastuna Mumuk Subhi Parityago Veram Gyam Falga Kathyate by the development of Krishna consciousness, one can know that everything has its use in the service of the Lord. Those who are without knowledge of Krishna consciousness artificially try to avoid material objects. And as a result, although they desire liberation from material bondage, they do not attain to the perfect stage of renunciation. Their so-called renunciation is called falgu or less important. On the other hand, a person in Krishna consciousness knows how to use everything in the service of the Lord. Therefore, he does not become a victim of material consciousness. For example, for an impersonal list, the Lord or the Absolute being impersonal cannot eat. Whereas, an impersonalist who tries to avoid good eatables, a devotee knows that Krishna is the supreme enjoyer and that he eats all that is offered to him in devotion. So after offering good eatables to the Lord, the devotee takes a remnant called prasadam. The every, thus everything becomes spiritualized. And there is no danger. There is no danger of downfall. The devotee takes prasadam in Krishna consciousness, whereas the non-devotee rejects it as material. The impersonalist therefore cannot enjoy life due to the artificial renunciation. And for this reason, a slight agitation of the mind puts them down again into the pool of material existence. It is said that such a soul, even though rising up to the point of liberation, falls down again due to this not having support in devotional service. So then Krishna continues to say that once we get angry, then delusion, you know, we, we get deluded, right? And can't discriminate, then delusion, bewilderment of memory, then intelligence is lost, and again we come back on the material platform. So it all starts from contemplating the, the sense objects. We can see how, how important it is to engage the senses properly. Otherwise we are all here in the material pool. So Rupa Goswami says in his Bhaktira Samrit Sindhu that everything, as, as we get more and more purified, as we progress in Krishna consciousness, we can understand that everything can be used in Krishna's service. 
you know, we think, uh, no, material objects, oh, no, 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 I need to stay away from it. As Prabhupada is saying, that someone may say that, oh, we, we can't eat good food. No, 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 we should just eat very bare minimum. But everything belongs to Krishna. So we can offer Krishna all the nice palatable dishes and accept it as prasad. You know, we say, no, 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 I need to give up this. But does it belong to us in the, in the first place? What does it mean that we have to give up? Oh, I have to renounce this. I, I cannot enjoy this. But it does not belong to us anyway. So rather engage it in the service of who he, it belongs to. And then we can use everything in Krishna's service. That is real renunciation. Rupa Goswami says that is... Um, yeah, that is real re renunciation. When we artificially try to renounce, that is falgu renunciation, artificial re renunciation, thinking that, oh, things belong to me. But the correct understanding is, no, things, everything belongs to Krishna. Everything should be used in his service. So then Prabhupada points out, due to this artificial renunciation, when we artificially renounce, what happens? Then, whenever there's a slight chance of sense gratification, then again, we indulge in sense gratification because the renunciation is not in Krishna consciousness. So this is said even for persons who have reached up to liberation. It's a very difficult stage to reach, you know, if uh, by engaging and by renouncing somebody's reach to liberation. But because the knowledge is not complete, he is not engaged in devotional service, again, falling down to the material world. So the sure way is engaging senses in devotional service, engaging everything in service of Krishna. That is the real renunciation. And there is no danger that even when one is liberated, one will fall down. So then the same example would apply in this verse as we did of the earlier verse, you know, Haridas Thakur. Ragatvesha Vimukta is to Ragatvesha Vimukta is to Vishayan Indriyas Charan. Vishayan in Vishayan in Briya Charan. Atma Vashir Vidyatma. Atma Vashir Atma Vashir Vidyatma. Prasadam Adikachati. Prasadam Adikachati. Translation. But a person free from all attachments and aversion and able to control his senses, all the regulated principles of freedom can obtain the complete mercy of the Lord. Purport. It is already explained that one may externally control the senses by some artificial process. But unless the senses are engaged in the transcendental service of the Lord, there is, very, there is every chance of a fall. Although the person in full Krishna consciousness may apparently be on the sensual plane, but because of his being Krishna consciousness, con Krishna conscious, he has no attachment to sensual activity. The Krishna conscious person is concerned only with the satisfaction of Krishna and nothing else. Therefore, he is transcendental to all attachment and detachment. Krishna wants the devotee can do anything which is ordinarily undesirable. And if Krishna does not want, he shall not do that which he would have ordinarily done for his own satisfaction. Therefore, to act or not to act is within his control because he acts only under the direction of Krishna. This consciousness is the causeless mercy of the Lord, which the devotee can achieve in spite of his being attached to the sensual platform. To the consciousness. Krishna is saying that 
uh, when we act for our own enjoyment, that is material consciousness, body consciousness, but a pure devotee, why does he act? To satisfy Krishna. That's his only concern. So he, it's not that he is not doing anything, that he's just sitting in one corner like a dead stone. No, he's doing all activities. But the, the intention is, is for the satisfaction of Krishna. And so that's the reason his senses get purified and he doesn't get bound. He doesn't get, he's not, he's transcendental, Prabhupada is into attachment and detachment because he's, he's not, um, what shall we say? He has no personal agenda in this. He has no, nothing personal. He just wants to please Krishna in whatever he's doing. And because of that, he's not concerned what's the gain, what's the loss. He's not concerned to any particular, particular. he's not uh, concerned with any particular circumstance. He just wants to satisfy Krishna. And Krishna is saying, a person who's free from all attachment and aversion, able to control his senses through regulative principles of freedom can obtain the complete mercy of the Lord. Regulative principles of freedom. Following the four regulative principles and engaging in the service of Krishna. And this can be achieved by the mercy of the Lord. Causeless mercy. Causeless mercy of the Lord. So we are, in, we are encouraged again and again to engage the senses in the service of the, of the Lord. Service uh, engagement of senses begins by the tongue, by chanting the holy name, by, by tasting Krishna Prashad, by the ears, by hearing the holy name and the Lord's glories, by the eyes to see the beautiful form of the deity, yeah. reading the books, the, the Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and so on and so forth. Is that okay? Are there any yes. questions or comments? Yes. Still? No? No? So, continue. Then. Prasad. Yeah, yes. Prasad. No, 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 continue. Sarva Dukkana. Prasad. Sarva Dukkana. Hani Asyopajayate. Hani Asyopajayate. Prasanna Cheta Sohi Ashu. Prasanna Cheta Sohi Ashu. Buddhihi Pariyavatishthate. Buddhihi Pariyavatishthate. Translation. For one, the satisfied in Krishna consciousness, the threefold miseries of material existence exist no longer. In such satisfied consciousness, one's intelligence is soon well established. So a Krishna conscious person is above the three modes of nature. Means he's on the liberated platform. This is the pure devotee, one who is completely Krishna conscious. So the threefold miseries, does anyone know what are they? The threefold miseries are one is the misery which is caused by our own body and mind. You know, our body can give us so many physical or mental diseases, distresses. The second is I'm sorry you were saying something, Nito. No, no, no. No, no, Bhavi, okay. please continue. And then the second is that um the, the distress which is coming to us from living other living entities. You know, sometimes someone else may not be so good to us, inflict some pain on us, or or even some pests like mosquitoes or you know, things like that. 
And then the, another one is um, miseries which are caused by natural uh, occurrences, yeah, earthquakes, cyclones, pandemics. So these adhyatmika, adi devika, adi bautika. These are the three full material miseries. And Prabhupada with and even Krishna, I mean Krishna says that that every moment each of us is inflicted by either one or more of these miseries. We may or may not realize it. You know, that's our position that we may not even realize that we are suffering. But at every moment, we are subjected to either one or more of these types of miseries. But we are so enamored by this material energy, we are not able to see them. So taking up Krishna consciousness helps us transcend these miseries coming on the transcendental platform. Nasti buddhi ayuktasya. Nasti buddhi ayuktasya. Nacha yuktasya bhavana. Nacha yuktasya bhavana. Nacha bhavaya taha shanti. Nacha bhavaya taha shanti. Ashantasya kuta sukham. Ashantasya kuta sukham. Translation. One who is not connected with, Krish with the Supreme in Krishna consciousness can have neither transcendental intelligence nor a steady mind, without which there is no possibility of peace. And how can there be any happiness without peace. Unless one is in Krishna consciousness, there is no possibility of peace. So it is confirmed in the fifth chapter that when one understands that Krishna is the only enjoyer of all the good results of sacrifice and experience, that he is the proprietor of all universal manifestations, and that he is the real friend of all living entities, then only one can have real peace. Therefore, if one is not in Krishna consciousness, there cannot be a final goal for the mind. Disturbance is due to want of an ultimate goal. And when one is certain that Krishna is enjoyer, proprietor, and friend of everyone and everything, then one can, with a steady mind, bring about peace. Therefore, one who is engaged without a relationship with Krishna is always in distress and is without peace. However, he may, however much he how may, how make, much a he may make a show spiritual, spiritual advancement, advancement in life, Krishna consciousness Krishna will self manifest in peaceful condition, which can be achieved only in relationship with Krishna. So Krishna is saying then now that when, unless one is connected to me in Krishna consciousness, one's mind is not going to be steady, one's intelligence is not going to be transcendental, and with in that condition, when the mind is always agitated, how can one be peaceful? And if one is not peaceful, how can one be happy? We all want to be happy. But we are, we are looking for happiness in sense enjoyment, that I will engage my senses in this and I will be happy without understanding that our real enjoyment is only where in Krishna consciousness, when we can engage our senses in the service of Krishna. Service of Krishna begins by hearing and chanting. When we hear and chant, hear and chant more and more, we will enjoy more and more this hearing and chanting. That is, um, that is the happiness of Krishna consciousness. So, but what we are thinking is, no, I'm going to enjoy separate from Krishna. But that, in fact, leads to uh, us having a very, very disturbed mind and without any peace. And, of course, if there's no peace, how could we be happy? 
So Krishna says in fifth chapter 29 that um, how can we have real peace? How can we have real peace? We have to understand. You know, we are thinking we are the enjoyer. But we have to understand Krishna is the only enjoyer. All the enjoy of all good results, sacrifice and penance. We are thinking all sacrifice, penance, all that is for our enjoyment. Krishna is saying, no, he is the only enjoyer. And then we are thinking all this, um, what, you know, so much belongs to me. I'm the owner. But the real owner is Krishna. We may be temporary owners for some time. But the eternal proprietor is Krishna. And we think we are the best friend of everyone. But actually the real friend of all living entities is Krishna. And if we can able, we are able to understand it, then we can have real peace. Not just an artificial, some artificial adjustment of the mind. No, but real peace. If we can understand this. Prabhupada would say this is the peace formula. If we can understand Krishna is the only enjoyer. He is the proprietor. And he is the best friend. And what we are trying to do is we are trying to compete with Krishna. And that becomes our struggle for existence. We have taken up this com competition against him. So, but the, the steady mind, the steady mind can have come only when we can understand that it's Krishna. Yeah, Prabhupada is saying that Krishna is the enjoyer, proprietor and a friend of everyone and everything. Then one can with a steady mind, make about peace. Till then, our mind is always agitated. Always agitated. Always in distress. So Krishna consciousness is a self-manifested peaceful condition which can be achieved only in relationship with Krishna. So it's not an artificial adjustment of the mind. No. We simply engage in hearing and chanting. And gradually, gradually, we will become, uh, we will get transcendental intelligence. Mind will get steady. We will understand Krishna's position and become peaceful. Indriyanam hi charatam. Indriyanam Indriyanam hi karatam. Yan mano ud. Yan mano nud. Oh, no, wait. Yan mano nu vidyate. Yan mano nu vidyate. Tad asya harati prakyam. Tad asya harati prachnam. Vayur navam evam bhase. Vayur navam evam bhase. Translation. As a strong wind sweeps away a boat on the water, even one of the roaming senses on which the mind focuses can carry away a man with intelligence. Purport, unless of all, all of the senses are engaged in the service of the Lord, even one of them engaged in sense gratification can deviate the devotee from the path of transcendental advancement. As mentioned in the life of Maharaja Ambarisha, of all the senses must be engaged in Krishna consciousness, for that is the correct technique for controlling the mind. So Krishna is saying all the engaged, all the senses have to be engaged. And we have to. Maharaj Ambarish did that. First, he controlled the mind, he engaged it in the lotus feet of Krishna, and all the senses he engaged. Tasmad Yasya Mahabaho. Tasmad Yasya Mahabaho. Nikritani Sarvashaka. 
ियसनेस or engaging all the senses in the transcendental loving service of the lord as enemies are curbed by a superior force the senses can similarly be curbed not by any human endeavor but only by keeping them engaged in the service of the lord one who has understood this that only by krishna consciousness is one really established in intelligence and that one should practice this art under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master it's called a sadhak or a suitable candidate for liberation so we just heard in the previous verse that even one of the roaming senses can you know sweep the mind away one of the roaming senses can give uh, bring about devastation so sometimes those examples to explain us is given like how the fish the fish sees the bait the worm doesn't realize it's a bait for him huh? but the fish is seeing the worm and saying i'm going to enjoy catches hold of it but gets caught in the bait uh, this is how it just gets caught and then the moth you know the moth they just go around the fire so attracted to the fire will go round 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 to the fire ultimately get burnt causes their destruction then the the male elephant the male elephant that's how the they they catch the male elephant they keep the she elephant there and just next to her they they dig a deep pit cover it with grass the male elephant gets attracted to her he wants to go to her when he's attracted he falls down into the pit that's how he get caught that's how they catch the elephants you know so like how our different senses they bring about our downfall now here again uh, roba the same that how can we how can we uh, what do we say control our senses how only when we engage them in krishna service transcendental loving service of the lord that's the only way you know as as there is snakes poisonous snakes but when the snake's poison is out then there is no no danger so the senses are very dangerous because they can bring about our downfall but when we engage them in krishna service they become purified the poison is removed from the snake so and then probat points out that only when one has understood it and that that is real intelligence this is real intelligence and that we need to practice under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master bona fide why the word bona fide is used because if i just take up propad would give the example if i just take up two boxes paint one green and one red and put it by the road put a letter in it the mailman is not going to come and take the letter is not the letter is not going to be received by the person i want to send it to but if i actually go to a authorized mailbox authorized by the postal system post a letter there it will reach to the person i want to send it to similarly the spiritual master has to be bonified he he should be coming in the disciplic succession is a authorized representative of krishna and he can for surely take us to krishna 
and uh, what are the senses they are talking here are those the five senses we have or is there anything more than the senses the eyes the ears the nose the tongue the skin the hands mm -hmm. legs you know hands and legs also senses if we see they are the working senses the hands the legs uh, then uh, the mouth then the ns the genitals so then those are the working senses okay then yeah knowledge acquiring yeah Yanisha Sarva Bhutana. Yanisha Sarva, sarva Bhutana. Asyam Jagarti Sam Yami. Asyam Jagarti Sam Yami. Yasyam Jagarti Bhutani. Yasyam Jagarti Bhutani. Sanisha Pashyato Munehe. Sanisha Nisho Pashyato Muni. Oh, uh, translation. What is night for all beings is the time of awakening for the self controlled, and the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective search. There are two classes of intelligent men. One is intelligent in material activities for sense gratification, and the other is introspective and awake to the cultivation of self-realization. Activities of the introspective sage or thoughtful man are night for persons materially absorbed. Materialistic persons remain asleep in such night due to their ignorance of self-realization. The introspective sage remains alert in the night of the materialistic man. The sage feels transcendental pleasure in the gradual advancement of spiritual, of culture. spiritual culture. Whereas the man in materialistic activities being asleep, self-realization, self -realization. dreams of varieties of sense pleasure, feeling sometimes happy and sometimes distressed in his sleeping condition. The introspective man is always indifferent to materialistic happiness and distress. He goes on with his self-realization activities undisturbed by material reactions. So then, what, what is Krishna saying? What is night for all beings is the time of awakening for the self-control. And the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective sage. How it's so Prabhupada is helping us explain that. Two classes of intelligent men. What is the one is intelligent of how to how can I enjoy this material world? And another one has the intelligence that how can I get self-realized? So both are intelligent. One is having intelligence of how I can enjoy this world. And the other one is seeing, oh, how can I get liberated, self-realized? So what happens is the activities of both of them are different. What the materialist, what when a person wants to enjoy the material world, the activities that they indulge in, that does not interest the sage, the introspective sage. So it's night for him. You know, he's not interested in those things. Whereas the activities that he is interested in, you know, maybe he's hearing, he, he's interested in um, hearing, chanting, he's feeling transcendental pleasure, as Gopal is saying in spiritual culture, but then the one who wants, who is engaged in enjoying this world is not interested in those activities. So when, when, the, uh, when the person is returning from, the, the, the person is awake whole night trying to, you know, dance away the night, drink away the night, this, the transcendentalist is sleeping. And when the transcendentalist is waking up to do his hearing, chanting, bhajan, that time, the, the other person is going to sleep. Yes, does that make sense? 
Yeah. So the and but Prabhupada points out the introspective man is always indifferent to materialistic happiness and distress. He goes on with the self-realization activities undisturbed by material reactions. So whatever is the condition, whatever is the situation, the devotee continues his devotional service. He continues his activities of hearing, chanting, remembering. Whether the circumstance is a happy one or a sad one. Yes. Yes, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I just wanted to know if sleeping condition refers to uh, Norin's here. Uh, in well, this paragraph. But we were Ignorance, because sleeping, the, the, we heard also that the sage is sleeping. It's just that one is not interested in each other's activities. Okay. You know, one does not participate in each other's activities. And also, as we just mentioned, that at night, someone who's drinking in, at the mm -hmm. bars, then the sage is sleeping. And then when the, when the person is returning from the bar, say four o'clock in the morning, he's mm -hmm. going to go to sleep. But the, the, the pure devotee, he's waking up to do his hearing and chanting. Okay. Yeah. Well, it could be even different times of the day, but it's just that they're not interested in each other's activities. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Apuryamanam machala pratishtam. Apuryamanam machala pratishtam. Samudramapa pravishanti yadva. Samudramapa pravishanti yadva. Yadva. Kamayam praveshanti sarve. Advat kamayama praveshanti sarve. Sushanti mapno tina kama kami. Sushanti apno tina kama kami. A person who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean, which is ever being filled, but is always still, can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. Although the vast ocean is always filled with water, it is always, especially during the rainy season, being filled with much more water. But the ocean remains the same, steady. It is not agitated, nor does it cross beyond the limit of its brink. That is also true of a person fixed in Krishna consciousness. As long as one has the material body, the demands of the body for sense gratification will continue. The devotee, however, is not disturbed by such desires because of his fullness. A Krishna conscious man is not in need of anything because the Lord fulfills all his material necessities. Therefore, he is like the ocean, always full in himself. Desires may come to him like the waters of the rivers that flow into the ocean, but he is steady in his activities. And he is not even slightly disturbed, disturbed by desires for sense gratification. That is a proof of a Krishna conscious man. One who has lost all inclinations for material sense gratification, although the desires are present, because he remains satisfied in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, he can remain steady like the ocean and therefore enjoy full peace. Others, however, who want to fulfill desires even up to the limit of liberation, what to speak of material success never attain peace. The fruitive workers, the, salvan the salvationists, and also the yogis who are after mystic powers are all unhappy because of unfulfilled desires. But the person in Krishna consciousness is happy in the service of the Lord and he has no desires to be fulfilled. In fact, he does not even desire liberation from the so-called material bondage. The devotees of Krishna have no material desires and therefore they are in perfect peace. So, um, Prabhupada is helping us point out that 
you know, the ocean is always full of water. Yet, when when the 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 monsoon comes, the rivers are gushing into the ocean. There's so much more water. Still, the ocean is the ocean. It doesn't overflow. It doesn't overflow. So that's a comparison given to a Krishna conscious, a pure devotee, a pure devotee. His he is not disturbed by the the desires for sense gratification. Why? Because he's so happy engaging in Krishna's service. He's so happy in his hearing, chanting, doing his bhajan, serving the deity, that he's not bothered by this material desires. That's why I say he's like the ocean, always full in himself. He's steady in his activities. He's not disturbed by the desire for sense gratification. As a proof of a Krishna conscious man. So we can see how much pleasure there is in being Krishna conscious. Because we are all pleasure seeking. We are not going to take up suffering voluntarily. You know, we all want to be happy. So we can see how much happiness there is in being Krishna conscious. That the pure devotee, he does, he's not even bothered by engaging in material sense gratification. He's experiencing the highest pleasure in relation to Krishna. Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasure. All pleasure exists in, in, because Krishna exists. Krishna is, you know, like the, when we are thirsty, then a few drops of water here and there, what does, it, what does it help? But if we can go to like a fountain and drink as much water as we want, then we feel satisfied. That is the position of a Krishna conscious person. The happiness that we are experiencing here in the material world is compared to like a drop of water in the desert. But the happiness which a pure devotee experiences in Krishna consciousness is like unending ocean. And because he's diving and uh, frolicking in this unending ocean of pleasure, then of course he does not care for this one drop of pleasure, you know. What, what does it matter? Just one drop compared to a, an unlimited ocean. So this is the position of a Krishna conscious person. So it encourages us to continue, to continue here and chant. The Krishna conscious person, he's so happy in his service, he does not even want liberation. Why? Because he... Krishna consciousness begins, the pure, pure devotional service begins from the liberated platform. He's no more entangled by the modes of nature. Krishna says in 18th chapter, 1854, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Na Na Para. That from the liberated platform begins pure devotional service. So, but the devotee is not saying, oh, first I will come to liberation, then I'll engage in pure devotional service. No, there's no prerequisite. He is just engaging in hearing chanting, engaging in his devotional service. And automatically he comes to liberation without striving for it separately. He's just engaging in devotional service. He wants to revive his relationship with Krishna. He wants to revive his love for Krishna. And Liberation just comes automatically. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. Maybe we can stop here for today. I'm not sure how long is the next one. Yeah, let's stop here for today. Were there any other questions or comments? Did you want to discuss anything? I'm sorry. It's good. No, so the more we hear, so the more we hear, the more we chant, the more our senses will get purified. The more we visit the temple, the more we engage. In Krishna's service, the more our senses will get purified, the more we can uh, be situated in our relationship with Krishna. Yeah.
the more we can give up our attachment to this material world, the more we will get attached to Krishna. So the more we add Krishna to our life, the more we will be situated in our real identity. So continue hearing and chanting, hearing from Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening and joining in. Shla Prabhupada ki chai kaur bhakta vindha ki chai. Hare Krishna. Yeah.